The peace of the Lord be with you all. I welcome you to the Presbyterian Hour, a special ministry of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Let us now join our hearts together in worship. We continue the service by singing Presbyterian Hymn 20, the first two stanzas. Beloved, let us pray. Almighty God, who has made the church thy dwelling place, be pleased to manifest thyself to us, thy servants, who meet this day in thy holy place, and inspire our hearts to worship thee in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, most holy and most merciful, we confess before thee that we have sinned and come far short of thy glory. We have broken thy commandments. We have been unthankful for thy mercies. We have been unfaithful to the trust committed to our hands. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us and graciously forgive all our iniquities. Cast us not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us, but restore on us thy pardon, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty Father, accept us as we dedicate ourselves anew to thee, and enable us by thy grace to obey thee in all things and to yield our hearts and lives to thy service. Grant unto us, we beseech thee, a pure love to thee, a deeper devotion to our Lord and Savior, true loyalty to thy church, and stronger desire to proclaim thy kingship and to glorify thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns and is worshipped and glorified with thee and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. We shall take our reading for today from Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. I will sing about the one I love, a song about my loved one's vineyard. The one I love had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He broke up the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted it with the finest wine. 
he built a tower in the middle of it and even dug out a wine press there. He expected it to yield good grapes, but it yielded worthless grapes. So now, residents of Jerusalem and men of Judah, please judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard than I did? Why, when I expected a yield of good grapes, did it yield worthless grapes? Now I will tell you what I'm about to do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it will be consumed. I will tear down its walls and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland. It will not be pruned or weeded. Thorns and brails will grow up. I will also give orders to the crowds that rain should not fall on it. The word of God. the Lord has made and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Let us all join our hearts and thank the Lord for our lives, most especially the lives of these ministerial probationers who have successfully completed their two-year probation and have been recommended by their respective presbyteries to be ordained into the holy ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Speak, Lord, for your servants have gathered to listen. Amen. For this special occasion, I've chosen for our reflection the theme, 
We have been chosen for a purpose. We have been chosen for a purpose. What is the purpose of our calling as individuals? And to my brothers and sisters especially, many convincing and nice reasons were given when we attended interviews at the various levels before we were endorsed to be admitted to undergo ministerial formation. I do not think that any one of us gave a reason that he or she wanted to have fame or to amass wealth or to acquire more property. You can add to the list. The summary of the different purposes we might have mentioned if indeed we remember, will be something geared towards fruit bearing, that we will be productive. We will be agent of growth, agent of positive change, agent of bringing light to the dark world and sought to season the rotten society. Based on this conviction and convincing reasons and visions that we had, we were given the green light to be enrolled, to be trained as ministers. Beloved, the text read talks about a vineyard which had the greatest privilege to enable it bear fruit. The land was well prepared. It was plowed and dug up. All stones were removed so that the roots of the vine would be able to penetrate the soil to absorb the soil nutrients to enable it bear fruit. Jesus vine, if you like, hybrid seeds were planted in it. A hedge or a wall was built around it so that it would be protected against wild animals so that they would not destroy the vine. A tower was built in it where watchmen would hide and see oncoming enemies. A wine press was built in it. If you like, a small factory was built in it. And I believe it's, it's a factory which was built in it and the wine was being pressed. Then the tendency that you get money from that factory to plow back into the farm will be something I believe could have happened. In a nutshell, Whatever was needed to be done by the owner of the vineyard had been done. Yet the vineyard failed to produce fruit. It rather produced wild grapes. Any activity that we undertake, we want to get results. At the end of the day, someone wouldn't like to be a trader for trading's sake. At the end of the day, the person would like to have some profits. You take any other activity, that is what it's supposed to be. A very disappointing comment by God that instead of producing fruit, it was wild grapes. John 15, 8 says that Jesus was telling us, whenever we bear much fruit, we glorify God. God who has called us Whenever we bear fruit, we glorify him. So, with that disappointing situation in verses 5 and 6, God's judgment was pronounced on the vineyard. Here, the people of Judah, the hedge around it will be taken away. It shall be bent, the walls will be broken, and it will be trampled down. It will lay waste, it will not be pruned. No digging will go around. It will be consumed by briars and thorns, and the Lord will not cause rain to fall on that vineyard because it had been unproductive after all the privileges that it had. What is it that the Lord and the Presbyterian Church of Ghana should do for us that it has not done, that God has not done? Beloved, out of the many hundreds of people who went through the process to become ministers, we were selected for ministerial training just by grace. This just by grace. We went through ministerial formation on campuses and that knowledgeable tutors. 
we went through practical attachments and the experienced ministers. Two years we went through probationary studies. Many things we were given to make us ministers of substance. Talk about financial assistance. From the general assembly level right down to our congregations and preaching points, we were given assistance financially. We had opportunity to attend conferences and meetings during which we learned something. You can add to the list. Having invested so much in us, God and the General Assembly Council, and for that matter, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana expects you and I, especially you who have been ordained today, to go and bear fruit. And we who have been ordained already to continue bearing fruit. Jesus said, and I could, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. John 15, 16. You and I have been chosen to bear fruit. A tree which has produced fruit can easily be seen. Any tree which has borne fruit, we should be able to see. You look at the tree crops, the oranges, the papaya, the what nuts. From afar, we can see the fruits which have been produced. And we take the tuber crops, you just approach cassava, just approach the yam. We can visibly see the fruit. A tree is supposed to bear fruit. By bearing fruit, I want to talk about two things briefly. Namely, the impact of our ministry in the church and the society, the community at large. And secondly, our character, what comes out of us as individuals. Our impact, the ministry, our character. What impact would our ministry contribute towards the vision 1.5? growing the Presbyterian Church of Ghana membership to at least 1.5 million by the close of 2023. What contribution are we making towards that vision? After the nation, your administration of the word and sacrament, your prayer life, and how you organize the church for proper prayer. You organize them for, I mean proper prayer. Our visitation to our stations and members, among others, should impact the Presbyterian Church of Ghana positively. Beloved, on the other hand, we must demonstrate a good character. A good character. Humility, good personal relations, respect, discipline, integrity. You can add to the list. We may have all the anointing and signs and wonders will be following us. But if we don't have character, we cannot please our Lord. And that will not be what the Lord expects of us. That we just cause signs and wonders to happen. Character, we say, is like a flat tie. One has to change that flat tie before he or she can continue the journey. I take that again. Character, we say, is like a flat tie. Can a tie up high? You can't go far in the ministry. Beloved, let us take note of the following things. Ordination is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. And that end is to bear fruit. That we will make our ministry impactful. We will exhibit character that we can tell people imitate me as I also imitate Christ. The key terminology for ordained minister is or software a hubinka. That's a full-fledged minister. Means we are complete, we are total, fully developed, we are matured. Or software a hubinka. And many ministers have misconstrued this terminology or software a hubinka to mean if you have a gown, I also have a gown, so we are equal. 
That is how people understand. People understand it. If you are a software who being car, some have gone far many years before you. Look what I mean, 24 years. Moderator 14 at the clerk of General Assembly. So the fact that we are having guns today that we are at par with other ministers. Beloved, in terms of age, we may be older than other ministers, but in terms of the number of years that they have been in ministry and probably the position that they hold, even though you are many years in terms of age, but because of the years gone ahead of you, because of their positions, you have to respect them. You have to humble yourself before them. Let us not abuse the recognition given by those who have gone before us that we are all colleagues. So by saying that we misbehave towards them. And those who have spiritual gifts, listen. Do not use the spiritual gifts that God has given to you to defy authority. With A, he's in the street. A, somewhere doing revival. The next man, he's in presbytery C, doing revival. And the presbytery chairperson doesn't know. The district minister under whom you may be working wouldn't know. The session with whom you are working may not know that even a software has traveled. Dear Christian friends, in an era of I know my right, I have my right, I want to put it to you that what you take to be your right in the eyes of the church may be wrong. So you don't bring, I, I know my right, I have my right in the church. You can't do that. Your right may be wrong in the eyes of the church. I've called some things on written laws. And these are things which are not written in the constitution. They are not in the manual of order. They are not decisions of the higher courts. I call them unwritten laws. I will not mention what they are. But these unwritten laws for me are guided by discipline, humility, respect, and common sense. Unwritten laws, they are guided by discipline, humility, respect, and common sense. Very soon you'll be taking the vows of ordination. It is my hope and prayer that you will listen to them attentively and respond from your heart. Respond from your heart. For God doesn't take it kindly when one vows and does not go by the vows. God calls such people fools. And God will destroy or punish such people. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4 to 6. Secondly, Dear brothers and sisters who are yet to be ordained, I will humbly plead with you to read through the ordination vows prayerfully at least once every month to enable you to remember what you have vowed before the Lord and before this congregation. Remember that we have been chosen to bear fruit, fruit that will abide, that will remain. And if we do that, Whatever we need in the ministry is the Lord God who has called us. It's not human beings. Though God can use human beings to supply our needs, but he who has called us, if we bear fruit, he will provide our needs. Hallelujah. Let our focus in ministry be the growth of the church rather than the growth of our material possessions. One, two years in ministry and some people will like to get everything in the world. And some people who have gone many years before them may not even have half or quarter. If you use fair means, praise the Lord. But we know some people who use foul means to amass everything. You have not been chosen for that. Bear to bear fruit. We do not have any excuse for not producing fruit because everything we need to enable us to do so has been provided by the Lord and the church. May the good Lord who has called us equip us now and always. Gracious God, we thank you for your word. Let your spirit remind us always and let your spirit give us the strength that we need to be doers of the word, 
but not hear us only deceiving ourselves. In the name of God, who alone is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Moderator said, these persons standing before the church have gone through the mandatory two-year period for probation. By dint of experience and character, their presbyteries have recommended them for ordination. Moderator, the General Assembly Council has affirmed the recommendation. So I now present them to you so you take them through the processes of ordination. So presented, Moderator. Thank you. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, who being ascended on high, has given gifts unto people for the building up of the body of Christ, we have met here by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana to ordain Reverend Rose Adai, Fred Alphonse Ado, Mrs. Gifty Anson, Godfred Antri, Samuel Buensi, Beatrice Boating, Georgina Kwenema Boating, Paul Canley, Eric Ni Odailai, Daniel Norte, Emmanuel Odami, and Frank Osei, to the office of the Holy Ministry by prayer and the laying on of hands by those of us who are called to do so. In this act, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, as part of the Universal Church, worshiping one God who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, affirms anew its belief in the gospel of the sovereign grace and love of God. Through Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, incarnate, crucified, and risen, God freely offers to all people upon repentance and faith the forgiveness of sins, renewal by the Holy Spirit, and eternal life. He commissions them to labor in the fellowship of faith and to call all people throughout the world to enter into his kingdom. Let us now pray. Almighty God, who gave the church people to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Graciously behold these your servants, whom we in dependence on Christ, the head of the church, are setting apart for the same ministry. Confirm, O God, for them the call these have received from you, and do them with power from on high, and do them with power from on high, and do them, O God, with power from on high, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We will sing prayer return hymn number 410. Christo Asafofo. Monsieur Akodepa. Bompire <laughs> 
Pompa ye drip with some new mana, sell self for you, maybe. Oh, one quail. Quino what? Quino what? Radim Wawam. Radin Yakopa, only a young Pabia and Yahoo day. Our young Guafa and Yang Hunuya. Just as yet to send the Nibu to Namipo, we are seeing Yaku Guruma. Umayan Srop, the Jacob Yami, only a no, Asida and Kaudina. Raduan Flow be, I want to be my own chanda. When I saw a knee, no bread to say, You are from Ma. Then now we show a new Yamson, Conad Macassian, so I two on so. And Radi or Kono Adding, the Moon Samudoso. Now so, you him say. Who are the Israel for Capricorn, Jordan, so Udo Mabicha? Radi, Elmse, and Quenchia, Bebre, Womb, or Habe, Bebre, Womb, Radi, Unihamo, Umbe, 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 your toss in Tabby and Better Trade and Bumina say, Yes, I say, John Cobby and your bank and say, Young for dear Moto, so. And I bet you have to do video, no, I dare say, Yemu, Utaba, Sina, my Cocosha, or Chamni Catabano, Nukra, or Musana Jumbo, or Matunama, or the Madame Sumun Sadi, a Sadi, a Yakate, is a pin better in chain, or Pitu Betu Munifa, or Ninon Beha, or Beha, or Nifu in Arcadia. A Radin and Krupa on Yakan say, A Radi, Sabi, our own Sam. Yene, we are seeing the Cocosia. Yabre, we are seeing a chin and a quitchery. We might a drought to our Dejania, who come over near Saudom. A radi, Yenim said, or Bushyasha on Sat, David can say, Oh, how when the Bonia for Antima will have a movie of one, and the Bible Chang Rabbis and Sunday looks at the Ramon. But I rather when I have a part as I was not in the Korea, when in Kaura de Hom, or Bemano, I come up there. Radima Manning Kaho, Namano, I come up there, Shawan, you are but you won't quench here. I go out in my head, dear, dear. A chum with Jesus Christ or demo. Radu Mojan and tea, my money of a hoodie, Mojan and tea, my manco, kind Mojan and tea, Pejama, a bibia, a tromon canoe, yet tromon caps, so moon if I do a quatomo. You wish on your two memo, and you don't want share. I don't want it. Amen. We continue in prayer. Send down, O God, your Holy Spirit upon these your servants, whom we, in obedience to your blessed word, are ordaining to the office of the ministry. Cleanse them, O God, from all defilement of body and spirit. Touch their lips with a burning coal from your altar, as we did for Isaiah. Equip them, O God, with the gifts of your grace, that they may boldly proclaim your word and your will. Make them a light to those who sit in darkness, watchful and loving guardians over your flock, that in all things they may fulfill their ministry without reproach, and in the end they received with all your faithful servants into the joy of their Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Rose Adai, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord and you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit. And may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord be with you and with your soul. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Fred Alphonse Addo, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments, instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord undo you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. 
May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit. And may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and your spirit. Amen. 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 Gifty, answer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord undo you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Frank, I say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord undo you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. 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 Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. 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 Ordinance, please stand. Go back to your seat, keep standing. And let us now sum up all our prayers at this ordination in the prayer which the Lord Jesus Christ has taught us, saying, our Father, now I will ask that you keep standing as I invite the clerk of General Assembly to lead the newly ordained to go and properly rope before they are given their charge. Alphonse Adu, Reverend Mrs. Gifty Anson, Reverend Godfrey Enchi, Reverend Samuel Buensi, 
Reverend Beatrice Boating, Reverend Georgina Koenima Boating, Reverend Paul Canley, Reverend Eric Ni Odailai, Reverend Daniel Norte, Reverend Emmanuel Odame, and the Reverend Frank Osei, I, moderator, acting on behalf of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, now declare you to have been fully ordained to the office of the Holy Ministry. Congratulations. Now go and feed the flock of God and tend them, not by constraint, but willingly, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not as domineering over those in your church, but being examples to the flock, so that when the chief shepherd is manifested, you all will obtain, together with us, your unfading crown of glory. So go and preach Jesus. Go and teach Jesus. Go and heal in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the God of heaven will be with you. The God who has called you will never fail you. And we all will be behind you. Congratulations once again. And God richly bless you. Welcome to the ordained ministry. The closing hymn is 761, after which the moderator will give us the benediction. Amen. People of God, we are grateful to God for such a refreshing word from the servant of God. May God's word continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. On behalf of the leadership of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I wish to thank all our donors for your continuous financial support for this special program. God richly bless you. May he replenish your stock. Please, you can also donate towards this program through the account details on your screen and you will be duly acknowledged. Again, for any counseling needs, please do not hesitate to call any of the numbers on your screen for assistance. People of God, and to meet again next week on the same channel, same time, stay blessed, and may the sovereign Lord preserve us all. Amen.